speed, and he'll get off in about 500 feet with this take off. Now, I think I hear him spooling up that Pegasus engine right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you sure do. He's uh, When he spools it up like that, he's just checking to make sure the engine's good, and the next thing you know, he'll release the brakes and be on the, on the go. And there he is. He's airborne at just a few hundred feet. What a unique aircraft it is. What a unique role it provides. Now, let's watch it as it goes away. And I assume now that that nozzle is uh, in the normal position so we can go fast. Yep, that nozzle's after right now, and he just uh, controlled that with his pilot and his nozzle control over. Now, he's got a stick, like any other fighter jet. Left hand, he's got a throttle. Yep. Where is this nozzle control? Yeah, that nozzle control lever is just inboard of the throttle. Yep, you have to make sure that you're grabbing the right one whenever you're flying. Oh, boy. Yeah. I bet you do. Well, cat flying the airplane today, Captain Brueggemann, call sign Bug. I don't know where that call sign came from, do you? No, I think it's just uh, based off his name. Brueggemann sounds like Bug. Okay. The high-speed pass, ladies and gentlemen. Here comes the AV-8B Harrier 2. It's a high wing airplane, got a unique landing gear, but I did see some stuff hanging under the wings. What are those What are those for? Yeah, those are called pylons, and that's where we put any kind of external store that we're going to carry. Uh, those stores can carry you know, be fuel tanks, targeting pods, bombs, missiles, uh, rockets, and then the gun, which you saw was actually underneath the aircraft. So, and, and can it carry a lot of stuff? Yeah, it can carry, uh, the basic aircraft weight is uh, 17,000 pounds, and then we can carry all the way up to uh, 32,000 pounds as our max takeoff weight, so that difference there, that's our fuel and our bomb load. So if it doesn't, ta so if, the, if it takes off with a full bag of gas, you can put a little less armament. If it takes off with less gas, you can put more armament, and I guess you can refuel it in the air. Like exactly, yeah, he's got an in-flight refueling probe. If you look on the screen now, it's on the uh, left side of the aircraft as he's inbound here. He's coming in about, uh, about 600. He's pulling about 5 Gs, 5 to 6 Gs as he pulls off into a, a right break there. Now, these movable nozzles are going to come into play with the next part of what we're about to hear. Yeah, definitely. And see. The music, Steppenwolf, Magic Carpet Ride, and that's what they've got, right? Absolutely, it's a great ride. What's Bug gonna do for us? All right, so Bug, he just uh, pulled off into a right break. He just put down his landing gear, he slowed down. Uh, next thing you know, he's gonna be uh, approaching his hover point. He's gonna overshoot that. He's gonna put his nozzle straight down, and that's gonna allow him to hover in front of the crowd today. He's gonna overshoot that point, and then he's gonna back up do some pivot turns and he's going to demonstrate uh, the Harrier's capability to maneuver in the Hummer. Now these exhaust gases are pretty hot, right? Yeah, they're pretty hot. They'll melt asphalt. They'll melt asphalt. So he's not going to be landing any place here. No, he won't. Not. Only on concrete. Well, take a look. It's going to be soon. Too loud to talk. But we'll let Magic Carpet Ride play as we see the Hover and the Harrier dance. Or the Harrier Hula, if you will. There you go. <laughs> Your United States Marine Corps AV 8B Harrier 2 is the Golden Knights come taxiing in. Here comes the Harrier. We'll just watch, and the noise will be the sound of freedom.
saw a lot of smoke during that hover and during the pitch up. Yeah, Rob, that was actually water. The engine, oh, yeah, water. The water? The engine actually gets so hot that we need to cool it down with water, which in turn allows us to, uh, to add more fuel to increase more thrust. So it actually, that water gives us a thrust addition. So you're saying you pour water on the fire to make it burn better? That's exactly right. Okay, I'll accept that. It doesn't make any sense to me, but I'll accept that. It's crazy. Pretty cool stuff. Well, Captain uh, Bud Bruggeman and Captain John Stouffer, a great demonstration and looking forward to all these years since the Harrier's been over 40 years now it's been flying with you guys. What's in the future for Marine Corps Aviation and uh, what's gonna, what's ultimately gonna replace this airplane? Yeah, ultimately that'll be the F-35B, which is a uh, Stovall variant of the uh, Joint Strike Fighter. Should be uh, an awesome aircraft with uh, a lot of capability. Well, look forward to uh, to seeing it. It'll be uh, it'll be sad to see the uh, the older aircraft go away because the Harrier has been such uh, an incredibly good performer, not only for the United States Marine Corps, but also for uh, oh, there's Vlad Olenek in a Mustang, but also for the Royal the Royal Navy and their Sea Harrier as well, since it performed in the Falklands. So it's been a it's got a quite an impressive combat record. It sure does, Rob. Now, let's look at the landing. He's going pretty slow. It looks like he ought to be falling out like a bag of hammers. Yeah, that's actually called a rolling vertical landing. And so basically what he's done is he put his nozzle to about 60 to 70 degrees. That'll give him about a 70, 60 to 70 knot approach speed and allows him to land and just uh, about 1,000 feet or so. So we can land in some pretty austere environments with that short landing space. We would do that somewhere like Afghanistan where we don't have, you know, maybe vertical landing. Got it. Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. The AB-8B Harrier II. Thank you, John Stover, very, very much. Rob's my